All right. So let's kick the let's kick this off. Okay, so advanced machine learning in 2018 is a lot like the baby in that video, but for reasons other than advanced machine learning, it's just a baby. And we'll get to why that is in a couple of minutes. So my name is Paul. You can find me at this address. I like to tweet about pretty much everything machine learning related. But yeah, I got started in machine learning, and specifically, and strangely enough, the field of reinforcement learning back in 2009 for my honors thesis for my electrical engineering degree. So way back in 2009, if you went up to somebody and, and told them that you were, your field of research or your field of work was artificial intelligence, they'd give you this really weird look. And I imagine you could kind of get the same look in 2018, if you went up to somebody and said to them, hey, I'm trying to cure aging, you know, it's the same sort of like, huh? Like, so that was kind of the look that you got in 2009. Now let's fast forward to 2015. A company with a really strange name, DeepMind, released a paper that shocked the AI community. It was such a big deal, actually, that Nature, the journal that we're talking about here, decided to put it as the front cover for the article for that month. The paper was titled Human Level Control Through Deep Reinforcement Learning. And the reason it was such a massive achievement in the world of machine learning and artificial intelligence is that, is that it was the first step towards something which is known as artificial general intelligence. So what is that? Artificial general intelligence is essentially the holy grail of AI and ML research. Um, it's the idea that you have one single algorithm that you can solve, that you can throw at any task and it will solve it for you, okay? So this is kind of like what you and I can do as humans, right? So say you as humans want to do, solve the crazy task of going to the moon what you would do is you'd form a team like you've just done and you know, do all the research required on material sciences, do all the research required on rocketry, do all the research required on logistics, pull it together and solve the really crazy idea of putting a man on the moon. Well, this is kind of what artificial general intelligence is. It's the idea that you have one algorithm that you can say throw at the problem of curing aging and what it will do is this algorithm will go off and start doing all the research required, I don't know, to maybe invent some new stuff around genetics, figure out some stuff with CRISPR, pull that all together, and eventually solve the, the aging problem, okay? So, we are nowhere near this. We're not even close, we are miles away from this, but we have made baby steps, and this is the significance of the DeepQN learner. So the reason DeepQN was such a big deal was prior to DeepQN, pre previous approaches to this, what we would do is, and say, if you were go back to 1997 and you are IBM and you are trying to take on Gary Kasparov 
who's, who's the reigning champion for chess at the time. What IBM did is they built an expert system. They went off, they re researched the very specific algorithms re required to play chess, and then built like a supercomputer around it, took some expert knowledge, put that into the system, and lo and behold, they were able to beat Gary Kasparov at chess. We all know this. So this happened in 1997. It was called Deep Blue. But if you were to take that same system and say throw it at Space Invaders or Breakout or Pong, it would break. It wouldn't even be able to do anything. You'd have to re-engineer the whole system from ground zero and start again. So this is the significance of Deep QN. It, it, wasn't, it was an algorithm that they could throw at multiple environments and it was able to solve them. It was able to solve the task specific problem for every environment. So let's take a look now at DeepQN playing a couple of the environments that it was thrown at. So DeepMind got it to solve old Atari games, old Atari 2600 games from the 1980s. But it, again, like I just mentioned, the significance is that it didn't just master one, it was able to master 50. Uh, in most cases to human performance level. So let's, let's take a look at that. So here we can see DQN playing Pong. It's playing the game of Breakout. It's playing Pac-Man. And there's three other games that I'm not really familiar with, but these are all the sorts of environments DQN was trained on. But in some cases, not only did DQN like play the, the, the environments at human level, it was able to go to superhuman level or play the game, find the best way of playing the game. So I think this is a video you might all be familiar with, but for some of you in the audience where you might not know this, so this is DeepQN playing the game of breakout, and the goal is to hit the blocks and score, score points. So after 100 training episodes, it, was, it wasn't playing very intelligently. <clears throat> after 200 training episodes, it sort of figured out if it just sits here, it can bounce the ball back. After 400 training episodes, it's bouncing the ball like kind of like a human would, right? But the real magic happens at the 600 episode mark. This is where DeepQN learns to sort of play at a superhuman level or finds the best way of playing the game. So what it does is it learns to make a tunnel. And then the ball just bounces around and maximizes the score. All right. So, let's go take a look at something I started at the start of this lecture. All right, so here we have the same algorithm DQN, it's playing in a much, much simpler environment. But we can see here we have walls that it can, cannot navigate through. These red things represent apples, so when it eats an apple, it gets a reward, it gets like a... And when it eats a, a green circle, it gets, that's like poison, so it gets like a spanking on the bum, that's bad. All right? So, what you're seeing here is incredible, like it's eating the apples, it's learned to navigate the environment, it avoids the poison. This is using a, a neural network, by the way, up here you can see the weights being trained. So the amazing thing about this is it took evolution, 1.5, uh, 1.7 billion years to get to this level of complexity, and humans have been able to do it in about 70 years worth of research in, in the machine learning field. And not only that, I train this in about 10 minutes on my computer using my CPU. So this is the same algorithm that you guys will be getting to by week four. 
this is a using a value based method and then from week five onwards we will teach you policy gradients and policy based approaches all right But before we jump into our first reinforcement learning algorithm, albeit a very baby one, we're going to take a quick 10 minute break. <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs>